Hi guys, welcome to part two of our iOS development tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial series, we are looking to build a iPhone application that pulls data from an external database. We are making use of MySQL as our RDBMS, and we're also using PHP as our programming language of choice to output the JSON data. Now, to give you an example of what we are actually building, I've got the iPhone simulator up on screen, and you'll see that it's a pretty simple looking application. Um, we've got a table view, there's a few rows populated within that table view. When I tap a particular row, it loads a detail view with some information about that particular city. Now all of this data is actually coming from a MySQL database that I've got set up on my server and we are calling, uh, really in real time, that information and populating this particular table view and also the detail view. So let's see how we might build something like this. Um, I've got Xcode opened up and I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to select the single view application because it uh, provides a really good starting point. We'll just hit next and I'm going to name this pro project, uh, let's say JSON iOS. And we want the device to be set to iPhone. We want automatic reference counting check. We're going to hit next. And I'm just going to save this on my desktop, hit create. And here we are. Um, we'll give Xcode a second to index the application, do what it needs to, and should be done in just a second here. Okay, our first step is to jump into the app delegate file because if you remember our application, it has a navigation controller within it uh, because it's a master detail application. So our first step would be to create a UI instantiate a UI navigation controller and we're just going to call that nav controller do an alloc and in it in it I actually want to spell out the word alloc and our init method that we want is actually going to be init with root view controller and we will set the root view controller to be self dot view controller and that's just because we are instantiating the view controller here. We want to use that exact same one. Um, we also do want to do one more thing, which is we will go ahead and set the root view controller for the window to be our nav controller. And once we've done that, we'll actually get a navigation controller within our view controller here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this code so you can see exactly what we have so far. So there we go, uh, pretty simple, just the navigation controller with the navigation bar, nothing else there because we haven't built anything. That's our first step. Our next step is to build a class and we're going to use this class to hold our cities. Um, the cities are of course coming from the JSON data, so we are going to go ahead and do just that. What we'll do is we'll right click the folder name here, I'm going to say new file. Xcode's going to ask me what I want to create a new file, what the template is. I'll say Objective-C class, hit next. And I'm going to name the class just city. And here's something that you will probably need to change. I've done this recently so you can see that it's defaulting to NS object. But this is what we want our class to be a subclass of. It'll typically be UI view controller, so just make sure that you either just type in NS object or you can expand this and select it from the drop down. Once you've selected NS object, notice that the targeted for iPad and with NIP for user interface options are grayed out and that's fine so we just hit next and we will go ahead and create these files okay so here's our new city class and what we're going to do is set up a couple different things within our city class so first of all let's create a couple different properties so I'm gonna say add property non-atomic strong this will be an NS string and we are just going to go ahead and call it city name and then what I'm going to do is just copy this a couple different times and I will change the rest of the values so the other items that we want to change this um, change here are city ID this will be city state and 
city population and city country. Now if you're wondering why I'm setting up these NS strings, let me show you exactly why. So in the first tutorial, you remember we set up, um, within our database, we created this table. And this table had five different properties. It had ID, city name, city state, city population, and country. So what we are doing is essentially setting up an object that can accept those values from our JSON data. So with this setup, we can now also define a method that would allow us to initialize our class. So I'm just going to say create this method here. So I'll say init with city name or let's say maybe init with city ID. It's going to have a parameter of NS string and it's going to have let's just say CIDs. Now remember this is not this is our user defined class so this particular initialization method is something that we are creating and um, that's why this method name can be really anything we want it to be I just usually will append and to all the different parameter names so I will go with in it with city ID uh, the parameter that it takes is CID and city name and the parameter it takes there is C name and city state. Again, it takes an NS string. Say C state and city population. So basically, we create a method that can uh, initialize all our uh, instance variables for. Uh, a particular object uh, that is descended from this class. So, and city population, also and a string, call it C population, and city country, which in turn takes an and a string object and we'll just call it city country oh, let's call it C country okay so let's see it's throwing an arrow what is the problem so we've got an ID in it with city ID let's see what the error actually says expected semicolon after method prototype 2 uh, City state. Oh, here's our problem. Right. Okay. So I had left and as a keyword in Objective C, and I was trying to use that, and so that's a that's a problem. Okay. So here's our method. We've got this set up. At this point, uh, what I probably should do is go ahead and synthesize these. And if you've been following along or watching any of the WWDC uh, conference videos from last year, you've probably noticed or somebody's probably told you that you no longer actually have to synthesize um, to have the synthesized state statement in your implementation file. That being said, there's nothing to stop you from adding the synthesized statements, and I would actually recommend that you do so. Uh, the reason I'm recommending it is this. Let me just copy the signature and you'll see exactly why I prefer to do so. So here's our method. Close, command S. We're getting a warning simply because we aren't returning anything yet. So, um, and that'll go away in a second. But here's why I want, why I personally like synthesizing things. Now I've got all these instant variables or these properties anyway, uh, that that I've already created. So I should, in essence, be able to access all of them in my implementation files. Look what happens when I try to type in city name. I get nothing. So it's almost like they don't exist. I get an error. Now the problem here is if you don't use the synthesized statements, what Apple's actually doing or the compiler's doing for you is it includes it at runtime, but it sets the instant variable names to be to start with an underscore. 
So this is the right form of accessing those particular variables. Now I personally don't care for that. So what I will do is go ahead and do the at synthesize. And let's do all of them. So we had city ID, city name, city state, city population, and city country. Okay. Then within our method, what we're going to do is we're going to say self is super in it. Then we're going to come down here and say if self, then what we want you to do is start assigning our instant variables the values that are being passed through the parameter. So we say city ID, city name, is assign the value of C name. Then what do we have next? Uh, city state is assign the value of C state, there we are. And then we have city population is assigned the value of C population. And last but not least, city country is assigned the value of C country. There we go. Command S. So with that done, we just return self. And we are good to go. So all our warnings and errors disappear. And we have now finished creating this first uh, piece of our application. Now what we're going to end up doing is for every item that is in our JSON uh, data or every city that's there, we're going to instantiate a new city object and we're going to set all these values. So now hopefully it makes a little bit of sense why we created all these um, instance variables or properties and um, you know how we're going to use them um, is something that we'll cover in uh, a subsequent tutorial here. So I will probably break this tutorial down or stop it right now so we can continue. Um, this way you can catch up if you need to and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.